In this step, we're going to take a look at area lights and we're going to use them to get a nice light cascading through the window that we've created. And the way that area lights work will give us a little bit more control than the sky dome light that we've just used. So again, we're going to delete the sky dome light because I don't particularly want it for this. And we're going to create a new light. This is another Arnold light. So it's going to be the area light. Here it is. And what I'll do is just move it up and I want to get it outside of the room pointing through the window. So this line on the front shows you which way it's pointing. So I'm going to want it to point this way. So I'm just holding J to snap my rotation. And then it's going to go on the outside of the room and be roughly in line with the windows. Let's just get this in place using this view here. And I want it to be slightly bigger than the window. I'm also just going to set it back a bit, move it up a bit, and tilt it down. Something like that. And now what we're going to want to do is to start tweaking this. So I'm just going to turn off the resolution gate for now. So we'll go to no gate to do that. And we'll try and see what effect this light is having and what changes we need to make to get it to look nice. So let's start up our IPR render and see if it's doing anything. Not really. The first thing I'm going to change is the spread and just bring that down. That's not really had the impact I'm looking for. Now it's time to turn the intensity up, I think. I think it's now starting to do something. We'll turn the exposure up as well. There we go. And this gives us quite a nice fantasy looking light where you get the streaks in it when it hits something. And this has been created by two things. One is the fact that I brought the spread of the light down. If you take the spread back up, you'll lose those shadows. I'll show you what I mean. There you go. You can hardly see them now. Let me just get a better angle of this. So you can't really see them. So we need to bring the spread down to get that effect. And I think this look gives it a much more fantasy magical kind of look which is what i'm going for for the aesthetic of this whole scene really to make this look cool you're probably going to want to turn the samples up a little bit this is quite an important light so i'm going to up the samples to about four i think that will impact your render time everything will take a little bit longer to do that but the shadows especially because the shadows are being cast through the air the quality of the shadows really matters I think what I also want to do, as I did with the directional light way back when we started lighting, I'm just going to add a pale blue colour to this. Which, Maya has remembered that I had that colour, so I'm just going to click on that, and then the scene will update again. And you can see that this is quite a nice light that we're getting. And I think, just to finish this off, I'm going to up the exposure a little bit. Let's try 4.2. I think that's starting to look pretty goddamn nice. So we're now getting towards where I want the scene to look, but I'm going to make one more final change that affects lighting and rendering, and that's that I want the liquids inside the flasks to have a glow to them. That will make the table more interesting to look at and also add to the magical theme that I'm going for, because generally, liquids don't glow. Well, depending on what kind of energy drinks you're into, but generally they don't. So that's what we'll look at in the next step. So I'll see you in a sec to make some glowing liquids. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.